the guy who I have really been impressed by of late, who had a 15-inning scoreless streak from his last start where he went eight innings going into last night until he gave up a home run. It was Chris Flexen who was looking really, really good last night. Here we go again, another one-two pitch, and a swing and a miss for strike three, and Flexen wins the battle. He strikes out Joshua Fuentes for strikeout number five in the long, long at bat, and that's it for the Rockies in the fifth. He has pitched at least six innings in eight of his 13 starts this year, including his last five. And I'm a bit old school when it comes to the way that I look at baseball. I like starting pitchers that can definitively get you through at least six, if not seven innings a night. So that way you're not exhausting your bullpen and you can actually use Kendall Graveman in crunch time situations like you were able to up to one after Shed Long's go ahead home run. Flexen's become reliable. And it makes me wonder about some of the awesome evaluations that Jerry DePoto has made and how that might relate to his future because we know that Jerry DePoto's contract expires at the end of the year. I say that because I was going back last night through some Jerry DePoto sound and I saw him talk about Chris Flexen on January 21st. Here's what he had to say about Flexen. You know, Flexen is a name. Flexen will start for us. Uh, he he spent the, the 2020 season as a full-time starter in Korea. And for the most part, his minor league development and major league opportunity has been as a starter. It, the, he's, he's still just 26 years old, and we think lines up with what we're doing. By no means do we anticipate that he's a finished product. That, he, that he's going to come in as a, as a veteran who's been through the, the rigors of multiple seasons. He, he has about 100 days of Major League service, and, and he lines up very much with the Justice Sheffield and Justin Dunn's and Nick Margaviches. So you hear that. He properly evaluated Chris Flexen. That's a guy that you were not expecting a whole lot out of, probably when you saw that the Mariners signed him this offseason. After all, as Jerry said, he pitched last year in Korea. So... That's one thing that Jerry DePoto has been able to do well this year that you didn't expect. How about the other, the bullpen? We had some questions about the bullpen going into the year because the bullpen last season was the Mariners' biggest problem. January 19th, here's what Jerry DePoto had to say about what the Mariners had been done this offseason with their bullpen. We did focus on, on beefing up this play, space and, and heading into the offseason, and we feel like we've done that. You know, the, the trade that brought Rafael Montero in, bringing Kendall Graveman back uh, in free agency, going out and bringing in Keenan Middleton. The, the theme with all of those players is, is that we feel like either, A, we know a lot about them in, in the case of a Kendall Graveman or even in, in the case of Keenan Middleton, but also the, the, the idea that we are trying not only to focus on getting better in 21, but finding ways to continue to progress for 22 and beyond. We'll see if they'll be able to get Ken Giles to bounce back beyond this season as he comes back from Tommy John surgery. But you hear some names. Yeah, some ups and downs with Rafael Montero, some ups and downs with Keenan Middleton as well. But Kendall Graveman's been unbelievable in that closer role. What else has Jerry been right about going into the year, you might be asking me. Paul, What's what? where are you getting at here? He said it's not unrealistic to expect this team to be above 500 on October 1st of last year. He also said Ty France is a major league bat. And then he honestly said, evaluating this current year, given what happened last season with the pandemic, we thought 2021 would be our contention window, but this year is going to be all about developing young talent. And for the most part, it has been. Has all that young talent developed to the degree that you would like to see thus far this year? Maybe not. Evan White, Jared Kelnick. But I think that everything Jer Jerry DePoto is saying is coming to fruition. And if that's actually taking place, if a guy has put together a plan and has been transparent with the plan and honest with the plan and told you everything that he expects to happen along the way, and along the way found some real steals, Ty France and Chris Flexen, Kendall Graveman moving into that closer role, you got to give him credit and you got to give him an extension because this plan is working. Many plans, they don't. They don't work. You need to see this plan continue. I think someone had a great text earlier when we were talking about Jerry DePoto and talking about his future here. 
essentially, it would be akin to you've driven down the road, you've seen all of the landmarks that you want to see, you know you're on the right track, and you know this team is at the very least progressing positively. Is that going to mean dominant World Series contender for a couple of years? Who knows? But all of a sudden, you want to fire the driver because he's not speeding. Another texter. Imagine firing a regime that started a teardown, is sitting above 500, created a top three farm system, and cleared all future money off their payroll. I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory right now. You got to give Jerry DePoto an extension. You got to. I would do it right now. Two years? Because, let's be honest, if you're Jerry DePoto, are you going to want to sign a, just a one-year extension? Especially with some of the mess that you had to clean up earlier this offseason? Kevin Mather makes his comments. Look, we did eventually hear from John Stanton, and I'll give Stanton a lot of credit for actually speaking with the media and honestly answering the questions he was asked. But it was Jerry DePoto who was out in the fire first, and he was the one that had to clean things up, not just publicly, but also privately with his players. I think it's time to show the guy that he is actually – well, well liked, respected, and deserving of more control over baseball operations going forward. And there was a bit of an implication in that Kevin Mather Zoom video that's so infamous right now that maybe things weren't that way. So that's how I feel. But my question for you on today's Paul Gallant Show, the most interactive sports talk show in Seattle, would you give Jerry DePoto an extension right now? I say yes. At least two years. Everything that you have seen this season shows a team that's heading in the right direction, and it would just make absolutely no sense right now to press the eject button, to drop out of the parachute and hope that you're going to land somewhere safe. You might end up landing in a tree. You might end up landing in the water. You might end up with some guy who comes in and looks at all of these assets that you have right here and says, eh, well, these aren't my assets, and goes in a different direction. And that happens all the time in sports all across our country. NFL, NBA, hockey, these things take place. When you bring in somebody else, they are going to look at some of the things that maybe were headed in the right direction in a completely different lens and a com through a completely different prism, and that is not something that you want to have happen. Nope, not right now, not with some of the progress that you were seeing out of this team.